Hey, sixth graders, welcome to our last lesson in lesson three of our New Testament overview. Today, our focus is the Christian life. Now, the New Testament books are divided into categories the same way the Old Testament books are. Uh, different names. The first is the Gospels. And that is Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John. The second is history. And that is the book of Acts. The third are the letters. Now, some people divide those, the letters or the epistles, is another word for letters, into two categories. Paul's letters or the epistles of Paul and then other letters. And then the last one is prophecy. Which is the book of Revelation. Now, the books in the letters category, Paul's letters and other letters, are letters that were written to real people in real places, um, to help them understand how to live the Christian life. And because we have those letters, we can understand how to live the Christian life. The this plan of salvation, God's plan of salvation, appears in the Gospels and in the books in the letter category, and also um, in the book of Acts as well, the book of history. The, the main concept is that Jesus is the only Savior the only God, and that God's grace is freely given. You cannot earn God's grace. The letters, the epistles, um, really stress the contrast between the new covenant and the Jewish law. Um, if you go to Hebrews chapter 8, and Hebrews is really interesting if you're interested in the difference between the old law and the new law. Hebrews talks a lot about that. But Hebrews chapter 8, um, verses 1 through 12, talk a lot about the difference between the old covenant and the new covenant. Um, these verses tell us things about Jesus, um, that he's a high priest. Jesus could not have been a high priest under the old law because he was from the tribe of Judah and not the tribe of Levi. He is in heaven, and these verses tell us that he's the mediator of a better covenant. He's the go-between of a better covenant. These passages also quote a prophecy back in Jeremiah, Jeremiah 31. Um, and this is a great example of God's omniscience and how God fulfilled all of these prophecies through Jesus. In 1 Corinthians 11.25, it talks about communion. And when we take communion, some people call that the Lord's Supper, um, we are remembering the new covenant. In fact, uh, Hebrew or 1 Corinthians 11.25 says, in the same way he took the cup also after supper, saying, this cup is the new covenant in my blood, do this as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. New covenant. Um, believers in the New Testament times needed to have faith to believe that Jesus had paid their debt of sin. And we need to have faith that Jesus has paid our debt of sin and that the only way we can become righteous is through Jesus Christ. Um, there are several verses about salvation that, um, that you can read on your own. Romans 3.23, 2 Peter 3.9, Romans 6.23, 1 John 1.9, Romans 10.9, and Philippians 2.11 and 12. All of these verses give us examples of how um, salvation um, happens and what we need to know and what we need to do. When early Jewish Christians, when, early, when Jews became Christians in the early history of the church, 
because they were so used to having to do things, having this, you know, if you don't do this, then you can't be in communion with God. It was very difficult for them to understand that Jesus Christ had done everything they needed to provide salvation. There are some Christians today that struggle with that same idea. And it is a little bit difficult sometimes because we are supposed to do good things. Galatians, uh, the book of Galatians tells us that we were created to do good works in Christ Jesus. And the book of James talks about how faith without works is useless. So sometimes we have a hard time reconciling those two things together. And for me, the easiest way to remember it is that I don't do things in order to get saved. I do the good things God wants me to do because I'm saved. My good deeds, my good works, the way I live my Christian life is the way I choose to live it because I'm following Jesus, because I'm grateful for the gift that he's given, and because I'm grateful for that free gift of salvation, I behave in a way that makes God happy, or I try to. One of the things that we need to remember as Christians is that our behavior reflects our relationship with Jesus, but it's not what has earned us our salvation. Now, I want you to look at page 12 in your workbook. There is something um, that you need to see. The second part of it, where it has the box at the bottom with the different um, Bible verses in it. And you are going to be reading each of those Bible verses and you're going to give each verse a number from the list of things. Faith in the Son of God, fellowship, peace, that kind of thing. Um, each row across and each column down will add up to be the same number. Okay, so Galatians 2.20, 2 Corinthians 9.5, Philemon 6, and Romans 3.22 will add up to a number. But then if you go across Galatians 2.20, 1 Thessalonians 1.2, 1, Colossians 3.14, 1 Timothy 6.6, 6, those will add up to the same number. So every way you add it, it's all going to be the same number. And I am going to give you that number. I'm going to go ahead and give you the hint. And that is, the number is 34. So when you think you're done with that, you think you've got it all right, double check by adding the numbers to see if every column adds up to 34 and if every row adds up to 34. If it doesn't, then you need to take another look and see where your mistake is. So that's the hint that I'm going to give you for that. Now, um, our test is going to be on Thursday. So I will be sending that out or putting it on Google Classroom and I will see you next time.